gentlemen of the Codex Station, Codex After Dark, Comics Unleashed. I am your host, Sal the Slab Guy. I am joined with our, my usual partners in crime. It is Dan the Man Kelly down here, the Ric Flair Comics right there, Woo! and of course, J-Dub, the Master Mold himself right there. How are you guys doing tonight? It's Saturday night. Let's see some pools. Saturday yeah. night. Get your pools out, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to be going through what, what we got. We got some back issues to show. And, of course, we got Uncle Gary Showcase. And you're going to be green with envy tonight. Green with envy, especially Jamie up there. Yeah, I'm fine right with there. it. Trust me. I'm right ready to kick back there. and relax. Deal with there this go. infection. I'm just go. like, I'll give you two. It's, it's an all mesmero. <laughs> there there it is. It's, a, it's an all tick bro. episode. Oh, yeah. No, tick is blue. I know. <laughs> that's the throw off. It's like green with empty, and it's all blue. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. colorblind. Or, or <laughs> the, other, the other night on the um, Grumpy Old Nerd show with Comic Logic, Rob's question in light of St. Patrick's Day was your, your top five favorite green heroes, whether they're colored green or they have green in their name and their costume. Right. There you so go. That was, Good. Yeah. So that was a that was a kick in the head. That was fun. Did anybody pick Impossible Man? Hmm? No, but you know what? He would have been fun. I, yeah. I forgot in my initial pick. I forgot Spectre because yeah, I know. You know we we don't have any time to think about. You know, he throws these things out on the fly, and I didn't. Yeah. I didn't think about Spectre, and I was like, well, yeah. I forgot who I kicked off. Well, he's gone. It's Spectre. Yeah. <laughs> Spectre. All right, let's get some business out of the way. All right, I was going to say real quick that it's that? funny because yeah. everybody has green for St. Patrick's Day, but blue is the official color of Ireland, not green. Really? I'm yeah. going to have to fact check that with my wife. It is. It's azure blue. Okay. I'm going to have to fact check that, but okay. Well, look, look, Richard. Look. Richard, Hello, what's Richard. happening? How are you doing, Richard? The, well, in the flag green, though, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, orange, green, orange, white, white and green. green. Orange, yep. white, green, yep. Oranges, I believe, for the north, green is for the south, and the white is the peace between the two. The peace right. between the two. Azure blue. Protestant Catholic. Found in a lot of symbols and stuff for them. Tim! Oh. Tim! Tim's lying Tim. to us. Why, why is that a super it's chat, dude? Not getting the, the golden pipes tonight. Huh? If you're no. lucky, you might get the golden pipes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You might do. You. you might. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get some business out of the way. I'm Sal the Slab Guy, your host tonight. And if you when you're not when I'm not here on Codex Station, you can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Comic Corner and also on Instagram as the Slab Guy77. Dan, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you at? And then introduce that guy to your right. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. Go give me a follow, go give me some likes. And um one yeah. K for DK. One K to a thousand. What are we gonna drive across the line, Sal? That big D. We gotta carry that big D across the across line. Across the line. One K for DK. So yeah, I'm at. Uh, I checked it earlier. Uh, I'm at eight thirty-seven right now. So nice, nice. It's been going slow. I've been stuck in the eight thirties for the past. Um, I want to say like the past two months or so. So. It has been going very slow, but actually, hey, what's up, Dan? That's eight hundred and thirty more than I got, buddy. So you're doing yes. great. You're doing great. Well, I hope so, since you don't have an Instagram. You're not supposed to confuse <laughs> things with the facts. Very, very true. Don't is a stretch. confuse things with the facts, Dan. <laughs> but you know what, I'm... Uncle Gary? He doesn't need to have an Instagram because he's already doing it better than anyone else that's alive. That's he's right. Not just the man. He's, trying. he's the man. I know I've said it before, but you got to know, and especially looking at his, his comics there. Last year, he spent more money on comics in comic shops from one side of this world to the other than all of you out there made in a year. He is a Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, styling and profiling, son of a gun, the master of the library of comics, a big player of comics. He's Uncle. Oh, Gary. Tim, Woo! thank you. Tim, there we go. Well, there you go. Oh, thank you so much, Dan. Like always, that's a wonderful introduction. That's why you are the man that is in charge of my career, taking me from venue to venue to please the fans. Couldn't do it without you, my man. So thank you. Um, if you really want to see me in person and hang out, uh I get the right. there you go. He, you the king. Yeah, uh, Jerry Lawler, he ain't the king. You the king, baby. Um, <laughs> Comic Logic, as uh, 
Loudoun County, Virginia's only comic book shop. I am one of the proud co-owners of Comic Logic. Please come see me. You can see me every Wednesday in person getting my four-color ink injected straight into my bloodstream, baby. And I told you before, read comics. Comics make you strong. Because you sit there and you lift up one book. Well, that ain't enough. You got to buy a whole stack. Then you're lifting a whole stack. Then you're lifting a short box. Then, by God, you are lifting a long box. And you're putting them here and there. And then you're moving them over here. And you're stacking here. And next thing you know, you are packed and you are jacked, baby. Do some push-ups, too. That helps. Jamie, so. maybe that's why Preston says you're buying all those books every week. But she's trying yeah. to work out. Yeah, Jamie doesn't have to go to the gym anymore. He's buying all the comic books <laughs> yeah. he's buying. So that's come right. see us at Comic Logic. And we've got some big events <clears throat> coming up I want to tell you about. We have our ninth anniversary. That's nine years. Nine years. And we have our anniversary <clears throat> on April 20th. Please come see us. We'll have special sales. We're still doing some finalizing, some things on you know some other nice fan friendly stuff for you to come by and say hi and say happy anniversary yes. and we'll tell you how much we appreciate you our big deal though is on free comic book day which also is may the 4th so star wars and comics coincide and to do that we have a special we have a special signing by mr brendan wayne who is the fella that plays the mandalorian when the helmet is on that's brendan wayne doing that acting and please come see us and he'll sign autographs for you and he's even going to have a tour here of the Library of Comics, which is pretty cool. Now, as, as cool as the Mandalorian thing is, what's really cool to me is his grandfather is my idol, John Wayne. So I will have John Wayne's grandson in this house. So that is pretty damn cool for me. But come meet him. So not only will you meet the man in the armor, you'll also meet Hollywood royalty's bloodline. See Brendan Wayne, Comic Logic, on May, May the 4th free comic book day and our last event i want to tell you about is on um, sunday may 19th we have our spring lot con and that is when we turn our comic book shops parking lot into a mini comic con we'll have we'll have vendors with comics with toys um we have we have um local artists local authors so we'll have all these great people in this great community that will have wonderful wares for you to partake of. Um, Sal and Dan came by with their families for our fall lot con, had a great time. So it's very family friendly. So please come see us if you're in the Northern Virginia area. We would love to have you for our lot con. So definitely a great show. Definitely you know, a great show. Th and thank you all for your participation. So before I kick it up to our master, our, our creator up there, we want to give a, um, a warm, uh, we love you and thank you to uh, our buddy Archduke Kevy, who started the comic character of the day site. That is the reason that we are here together, all acquainted, is because of that site. We met on that site and we uh, we we figured we we realized we were all birds of a feather and that we had a uh, we had a desire to let now let we all in. together. Yes, we flocked together and we wanted to we with this comic comic love that we had we wanted to put out on the airways but it was through that site by our good buddy archduke kevy i do a character i do a cover of the day um kevin post uh, archduke kevy post the, uh, the character of the day dan um post a random panel of the day which was really good if you're into a little bit of spanking that's that that was your that's your panel of the day that we had today and um he has a random he has a question of the day sal is frequent um contributor poster there and jamie frequent jamie flyer. like he does here he's a frequent player like he does here, Jamie's always watching. The other night when we dropped Jamie's name, there he popped, oh, he popped up in the, the comments with a pair of eyeballs. He's watching. He's always oh, watching. That, that's my <laughs> moniker now. Even yeah. DJ knows. Yeah. As soon as I put the eyeballs in, he's like, what's up, Jamie? Yeah. <laughs> and he's ever and he's like, vigilant. Oh, Sal's getting ready to get fired again. Yeah, there he is. That, <laughs> nope, that's right. I'm not. Not tonight. But, the, but the, the reason he does that is because when you're someone that has built something like he has, he took – he took something that had no form, no substance, no structure. It was an idea that was floating around in his head, and he knew that he needed to do something. He had this knowledge, and he had this passion that he needed to transmit this goodness of this industry, this hobby that we all love so much, that he had to get it out of his head, out of his chest, and he had to put it out there in the airways Ooh. so the public could consume Thanks, and love what he loves so much and because of that he's brought us all together but he is our builder he is our master he he, he is the one that has started this train running down the tracks and you know we're going uphill for a while but my god we've hit a nice place where we are coasting now and we are getting some speed up and the train it's going 
it's going down the tracks, but the reason it's going down the track is because our engineer there, our engineer that had the foresight, he built the whole damn railroad and he's running the railroad and he's running the engine down this railroad. And we couldn't have this maximum overdrive and the speed that we have if it wasn't for that man. He's doing everything. He's even shoving the coal in the furnace to get us down. And that is the reason he is the one, the only, the master builder, the creator, the architect, j Doc. Oh, I love that. I love you guys. <laughs> I, I just, I just saw you. Ooh, okay. Got the vapors now. <sighs> take, take, take a drink, Uncle Gary. Take a drink. Yeah. Phantom. Get, get some water, man. Get some water, man. Oh, God. Just, just let the guys know in chat for the super chat people that have sent so far. Which is all right, guys. Um, yeah, no <laughs> refunds. So, <laughs> sorry. caveat emptor. <laughs> Buy, buyer beware. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the five dollars, but uh, you're never gonna see it again. It's gonna go towards books for people and new upgraded equipment. So yes. <laughs> but yeah, thank you as always, Uncle Gary. But you left one part out, and I don't understand why you left one part out. There's what something we have that you want to give the people. Oh, well, that usually I have to be prompted to do that because, he, know. you know, you know, I've got I've got to be petted and stroked a little bit before I let you I'll know. pet. I won't stroke. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> deal, baby. Listen, here at Codex Station, every host you see, we have all the socials and we have them and we are bursting with them. And all we want to do is give them to you. There you go. <laughs> Indeed. Tim, you can have these. You can have these. <laughs> Keep reading the comics. Tim, here. you get to, you get to see those for free. For free, Tim. I can't uh, wait for you. I can't wait to see you in person, baby, and rub these up against you. Oh my god! <laughs> Woo, that's on on that note, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't checked out the CodexStation.com, head on over there. Beat the team merch because there's you can buy merch from there and you can find all our socials as Uncle Gary has so elaborately you know explained to us elaborately. What do you, you mean know? Tim's not coming to Baltimore now? What the hell happened? Oh, he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no only fold light he's paper. Going. No fold light paper. But yes, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, <light> paper. <laughs> head on over to codexstation.com and check out the site, meet the team, and get some merch and so much more. All right. Guys, are we uh, ready to start the show? Because we're still in the pre-show here. This is still pre-show stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm more. I'm more than ready. I can barely make it through breathing. So yeah, let's do this. This is just a pre-show. This is <laughs> if the breath. pre-show is anything like what the show is going to be like. I know. Hold on to your hold on to your helmets, folks, because it's going to get bumpy. I'm in right, Jamie, you can make fun of me again because when we go when the countdown starts, I got to go upstairs and check on Emily. Wait, wait, if we make fun of you good. now, would that be pre-show emasculation? Oh my Pre-show god, something. Uncle Gary, stop they, it. They have, they, have, they have pills for that. <laughs> Not the good kind either. <laughs> Not the good kind. Wait. My daughter she is, is disgusted. <laughs> watching all this live. She's disgusted. <laughs> she, she should be. Sorry, Gazelin. She should. Uh, we, we, we apologize from the hearts of our bottom. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> That's why I said hearts of our bottom. But I know. I, I know, you know on the on the podcast the other night you guys were like oh you watch them when we go to break it's like you know adhd oh it's hilarious we just it see just like like a ant in a little maze just well he'll, look, he'll come down like he'll, he'll come back down he'll be dressed in a suit like he was for the award show yeah he yep. left and then came back and he just had a little tuck shirt on i'm like did you go to change like <laughs> <laughs> no he has suit tie he was he was ready he was all set. He was. Yeah, he was. He's looking yeah, like said, Emily, Emily's up there, so I got to, you know, get a second run up, make sure she's all good. I know she's probably. Don't don't yeah. trip. Don't trip falling, coming down the steps now. Yeah. Now, well, that's all responsibility. Now.
and the chair is empty. It's the ghost of Dan's Christmas past. <laughs> yes. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Codex Station com, uh, Codex After Dark Comics Unleashed. Unleashed. Get ready, because we're going to show you some pools that we got this week, show you issues we picked up, give you back issues that we picked up, mail calls that we've gotten, the whole nine yards. Plus, Every, you plus, you get it all. Plus, Uncle Gary's Showcase. I'm pretty sure you. Dan's chair is possessed. Oh, oh, the, there there he is. <laughs> he's not, you would be under I, the table. We don't huh? want to know what he's doing underneath the desk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 That's not how you get the raise. No. <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks for that. Know. Thanks for that visual, Captain America. We appreciate that. <laughs> he's not, uh, he's he's there. She's just laying there watching watch some cartoons now, about half asleep. And she's like, Can you take a break? I'm like, Well, I just came to check on you. She's like, Can you get me some water? I'm like, Wow. Okay. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Who today. wants to go first showing off our pools for this week? I can. <clears throat> Jamie, since you haven't been on the show in a week, why don't you go first? I love how you still picked me, even so I, I was like, I'll go. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> then you'll go. You, again, told, but no. you told me to run the show, and I'm running the I show, am, okay? Dude, All right. I feel like absolute death still. Oh, well, this way you get this way you can do it, and if you die afterwards, we at least got to see your books. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Just don't fall it. on them because you'll crinkle them, and they then that's ruined, and I can't create create them. So no, you can't. If, if you right. sneeze, don't use your book. Don't use your book when you sneeze. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how I, that's how you put the pages together, right? <laughs> well, there are other <laughs> ways too. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking about the nose goo. Um, but yeah, so oh. I'm gonna you're gonna hear me rant for a minute. Uh -oh, this is uh -oh, the first uh -oh, book, uh -oh, and this is uh -oh. why I want to rant. But the first book I'm showing off, and before, as always, I got to preface this: I'm always a week late. I have get my books every two weeks. You're in the middle of nowhere, middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. Middle of nowhere. So He's middle of nowhere. Right. He's a cheesehead, ladies and gentlemen. I do like cheese, though. but the first book <laughs> I really like cheese. I like is cheese. The Last Ronin Two Revolution Number One. Oh yeah. And the reason oh, I'm gonna get mad. Geez. Is because this book is like the last series they didn't learn, and it's not even a board and bag size for anything unless you use a magazine size. It's oversized, but it's not magazine size. So if I look at the board and bag, put it up next to it, yeah. it doesn't fit. It's yep. just a little bit too big for everything. Now, is, isn't that the exact same I size as the said. original Turtles, though? No. Is that why they're doing it? No. Because the original one I thought was a larger it, size like it, that. It, I don't think it, with those I don't think they were. I think they were honestly back then it was that Silver Age size, if I'm not mistaken. Because that was I've never book, owned you, them, but I thought they were in that kind of size at those. But I may be wrong because I never owned that book. Yeah, no, it's just ever since the last Ronin, they're keeping that. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, last Ronin Lost Years, the series before this. That led into it, it was standard comic size. So I don't understand. I thought they got to the point where they're like, yeah, people were upset about it. Let's just put it back to standard. And now they're like, now that number two's coming out, we're going back up. It's like, no, now I got to like makeshift a board and bag. Upsetting. Well, it's not even just that, too. Like, if you're, if you're, you know, trying to keep them all together, what box are you going to put them in? You're like, this. This doesn't fit a normal box, but this does fit a normal box, but this doesn't fit a normal box. Mm -hmm. it, a CGC uh, graded box would fit it. Yeah. And that, I actually and do it. All, I do it I got a magazine size box for just the oversized stuff, but that's. Yep. that's but not then the middle size. ones are going to be like, are going to, you know, kind of rattle around in there some because they'll be too small. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm regular size just because I've seen them graded and the slabs. Are okay. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're regular size. Too. Okay, I, I thought they were a little bit bigger, but okay. But yeah, but yeah, that was my rant because it's just annoying at this point. It's like, come on, just make it a com or a magazine size or a standard. You but how was the book? Rage. Huh? How was the book? Book's good. If you guys read uh, Last Ronin and then went into Lost Years, it takes up right after Lost Years. It's. I read the first it's Last Ronin. Right. I didn't read Lost Years. Did so did Lost Years take place before Last Ronin? So it was a lot of flashback and current. So not to give too much away, but this is basically the Turtles' offspring. Okay, I was going to say, they, all, they were all, you know, 
he died at the end of the last Ronin. Yeah, but then it shows what he went through while the turtles were dead because there was that big gap and no one understood why Michelangelo was the last one. Newsflash. Um, was the last one standing. Oh. And it shows his travels after everyone's died and, you know, gone and he's coming back. So, okay. but yeah, I, I still love it. it. I think it's amazing. I think it's going to be it's a cash cow like usual. Like that well, last Ronin was probably my number one book that year. I don't read the turtles, and I read that book and liked it. Yeah, I think it was. Nice. I think too, it was them picking Michelangelo to be the last one, like made it that much more tragic because he was always the one that was the fun loving one and the partier you know, guy, and then making him the the one that's like totally broken because all of his brothers died made mm -hmm. it you know made it hit that much harder yeah mm -hmm. do you like dark turtles or 90s tv show style i like both i like a mix yeah i think when if you get that mix just right it's amazing uh but next up we got void rivals number seven nice get that glare out of there Ex excellent story uh rangers academy and this is number five. Cool. Nice. I like it. The last issue of Gargoyles Dark Ages, number six. Gargoyles. I love this series. I love Gargoyles and Gargoyles Dark Ages. Did you see, I don't know if it's still going or it might be over the Gargoyles Kickstarter they did. Yeah, i seen that. Where they were releasing a... Uh, they were doing like uh, what trades of all the original, mm -hmm. um, all the original. Yeah, I see all that. I want them. Uh, Transformers number six, right? Six. Yep. 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 Uh, another good issue. Yes, it is. We're uh, having a new Morphin. artist start on it soon. Yeah. Next up, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers: The Return number two. Oh, I like that cover. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. So far, I'm digging everything that the Rangers are doing. How many Power so, Ranger books are there each month? Each month, as of right now, there's just the uh, Mighty Morphin. There's this one. And then there's... Uh, the Ranger, uh, Academy. Ra Academy? Ranger Academy. And then there's yeah. uh, Ranger Universe, which is like a one month every now and then thing where it'll tell a story that bleeds into the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger story. Okay. And how many so variants did you get? None so far. I don't think. Oh, <laughs> they, Sorry, they, they usually throat. don't put the variants out until like a week later. So, uh, like okay. the helmet ones that I get. Yep. So next up, because we got this and we were behind, I got Edenwood number three. Nice. That's a cool cover. Number four. Ooh, there you go. Nice. And number five. So I'm all current. Have you read them? That's a cool cover. That's I started cool the first one. Very wordy. That that I is really that like is a great cover. Yeah, so. the artwork on it's spectacular, but I, I I dropped it after I think the third issue because it was just I was reading it and I'm like, this is just it's like you're it's like we're dropped into the into the story like halfway through with no explanation as to like you know everything that's going on. Well, that's why I, I follow most of the creators on like Instagram. Like Tony Daniel put out that he's like, you might feel like you don't know what's going on, but it's going to come to light. And I'm like, okay. Uh, next up is the last issue, which I have not read yet, but Precious has. Of uh, I'm going to say it wrong probably. Like Guma, the beginning of her. This is number four. That's a great cover. Yeah. Who yeah. <clears throat> doesn't love hot pants? Oh, yeah. And yeah, so there's there's a lot in here that's hers now, so I'm gonna make sure I preface that. <laughs> <laughs> but House of Slaughter number twenty one, and this is the Butcher War, which I th so that's with House favorite. of Slaughter starting off. I'm gonna see if I sneeze real fast. If not, hang on. And Bless there you are. Bless, Bless you, buddy. Um, Bless. House of Slaughter started off really blah for me, the first arc. And I wasn't really into it. Then the second arc was okay. Once it got into the Book of Butcher and uh, Alabaster, it has like I picked that right now over uh, something's killing children. It's that good. 
wow. is either better or on par with. So, yeah, that first storyline and it was when that book started was not it was it was like tedious to get through. Oh yeah, you're you're reading it just to be like, okay, I understand the totems, dude. Like, can we just move on? Yeah. Um. Next up is one she found because she always tries to find the new ones that look kind of disturbing and cool. Uh, this is from Image. This is number one. Our bones dust. Oh, that's neat. I like the look of that. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be digging in that. that at the shop at all. There'll be a lot of reviews coming very shortly from me and her again. With more bloopers, probably. Okay. <clears throat> One of my favorite books so far this year, from last year to this year, but it's the end this year, so it's technically this year. Uh, Jeff Lemire, Fish Flies. Okay. I am absolutely <laughs> loving this book. Right. Is he doing the art too? Yes. That's why I can't read it. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. it, his, it his art just kills me, man. I know. I'm, I'm, the same way. I'm not, I'm not a fan alone, of art. I like I not I fuck I dogged from uh what was it? Primordial. It was great at the beginning and then just fell off. This has been amazing storytelling from the beginning to end. <clears throat> Uh, another one she got because I would never have found this or picked this up. This is a variant of it, and it's the ink variant. Ooh, variant uh, cover. Yeah, this is uh from uh, Dynamite. This is Disney's Lilo and Stitch number oh, yeah. one. Oh, that's a great cover. It is. I got that. I did I, got did that I just cover. hear there's going to be a live action Lilo and Stitch yeah. movie? Yeah, and a live action oh. Moana. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, now into Marvel. Obviously, I gotta start showing you guys some kind of love. So I got Ultimate X Men number one. There you go. Picked up Thanos number four. Uh, I like that cover. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Death becomes him. Uh, Avengers eleven. That's a fun read. Yes, I love everything Avengers has done so far. It's been fun. Uh, Ultimate Black Panther number two. That was a good one. <clears throat> Especially the last page. Uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I liked mm -hmm. that one. I read it. I bought it just because I was uh, the blank sketch cover. I was like, oh, I'll draw something on here. But I, I, well, since I got it, I'll read it. And I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, Venom number 31. Ramos is art either. Oh, yeah. Like that's, that's, cool. Cool. that's cool. That's cool. That's the A cover. That's the A cover. I know. And then... Carnage number five. Yeah, that's oh, a good book. I read that me. today. Uh, the Immortal Thor number eight. Cool. Ross. Yeah. Can't go wrong. There's this this one they threw three. in because obviously all everything I have oh, is Spider-Man yeah. because of her now from Marvel. But Symbiote Spider-Man 2099. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's cool. That is really neat. Uh, Avengers... Twilight number four. That's a great series. That yeah. is, one. yeah, that was a cool issue. Which is going to be fun to do a review on because I'm thinking about taking that one because she has so many bad things to say. Oh, um, really? So me and her can argue. Oh, and you guys can laugh. Uh, Amazing Spider Man forty five. I love the cover. <laughs> I love the me cover. Too. That's a great one. Uh, what if Venom number two? Yeah, that was a good book too. Nice. Now, this is the facsimile, because <clears throat> I got 252 last time. I got 253 of the Amazing Spider-Man. Very cool. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, we're moving on to DC, finally. Poison Ivy, number 20. That's, that's, that's been nice. such a good book. Oh, yeah, I was, it's been DNA amazing since the awesome. start. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Batman 145. I love yeah, that cover. Nice oh, old cool cover. Yeah. We have Red Hood, The Hill, number two. I'm having a hard time getting into that series. It's different. Yeah. Yeah, I read the first issue. I was disappointed because I thought that it was going to be – I thought it was going to be him, like, after what Bruce did to him. Yeah. yeah. It takes place before that. Right. Last – or next up, not lastly, but it's the last issue, I think. Yeah. Sandman, number six. I love the last page. Yeah. yeah, I haven't read it, so I'll be re ready for it. Yep. What's, hey, going on, what's, what's up, Eternal? What's, what's going on, buddy? How you doing, brother? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, just, just, 
I just uh, sent Tim my review that I did of that series. Yes, and I got your thumbnail. Um, this this isn't even like the greatest cover ever. I just think it's cool and funny at the same time. This is Blue Beetle number seven. And you guys will probably laugh once you understand it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Who doesn't love ambush bug? <laughs> He's got the bug spray. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Did you see the post that Kevin McGuire put up complaining that DC didn't have him do an alternate cover for Justice League and versus Godzilla? And he was like, This is in my, it was like, if there was anything that was ever in my wheelhouse, it's this. Why didn't you have me do an do a alternate cover for this series? Yeah. Uh, well, Eternal, I can relate where every show we do, I feel like I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're just flying by the seat of our pants sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll be he'll be a big lick. He'll be a big lick. We, we, you'll see him there, guys. Yep. Awesome. Uh, next up, Green Lantern World. Yeah. War Journal number six. Yeah, Love the cover. cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good cover. Uh, we've got Green Lantern number nine. I like this cover. Oh, uh, Jessica. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Not enough love for Jessica. That's and true. My last one is Action Comics ten sixty three, and I actually like this. Like I love. The yeah, that's a fun cover. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, that's everything for me. The last two weeks. All right. Cool. All right, Dan, you're next. Show us your stuff. <laughs> I just like. I was like, Dan, you're up. Dan, right. you're up. Very I'll go sweet. next, and Gary can go last. Hey, uh, hold on a second, Jamie. Was that all your back issues as well, or do you have back? That issues? was everything. All right. I, so Dan, I got back, I'll have back issue, uh, issues next time. Show everything you got in one go. Back issues too? Back yep. issues as back. well. All right. Uh, I'll start off with DC. That's what I got on top. That's what I've actually read so far this week. Um, the new Superman number 12 wraps nice. up the uh, wraps up the storyline that was going on and teases, you know, the next storyline starting next month. That was good. Uh, Titans number nine, yep. which, uh, which was really good. And it had a couple, uh, if you guys are right, it had a couple moments in it. That was, yet, no. Yeah, it had one or two moments in it. It was like, <laughs> like actually like a laugh out loud thing that was good. Um, Justice Society of America number nine. Which, nice. Mr. Yeah. Terrific. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I like Gary, I love the JSA. So Me too. You know, I'm, I'm happy that they're doing this book and they did the three miniseries. So I hope it's not, you know, those are all ending. I, you know, this, I think what this ends at issue 12, right? Well, we'll, I, we'll see. Hopefully it'll keep going, but I mean, hopefully. So I, I just hope that they don't end it with them and yeah. you know, just let them. Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah, Waller, is, Waller is scary in, in this too. There's a scene in it with where Peacemaker walks in her office and is like. They, they are really turning her into a big bad lately. Oh, yeah. She's definitely yeah. she's definitely crossed from, like, questionable good guy to straight-up villain. Mm -hmm. uh, for, um, for Independence, I got Cobra Commander number three, which I'm really looking forward to reading, and G.I. Joe number three. Was it 305? Oh, I love that cover. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great cover. Yeah, they're they're setting up something. They're setting up a big war in there. So it between two different factions of Cobra and G.I. Joe kind of in the middle. So I'm uh looking forward to see what they do with that. Uh I got the second print of Ultimate Spider-Man number two. Nice. Uh, I missed it last week, uh, so I picked it up this week. The Weapon X Men number one. Yeah, I like that. That was pretty good. Yeah, I'm 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 glad. Like I thought that they the reason I missed it is that they didn't have any on the shelf, but I guess they did, and I just completely missed picking it up. Um, but I got also Spider Boy number five. I love that cover. Yeah, where he's getting ready to fight the Rhino. Yep, it's getting the foot. Yeah. Vengeance of Moon Knight number three. Oh, that's a badass cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm digging it. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that it picked up right where the last Moon Knight series left off. And you know, I think like everyone else reading it, like I'm anxious to see who the new Moon Knight turns out to be. 
And then the one, um, the one back issue I got is when I showed those back issues I got off, was it two weeks ago or so? And I said that they, the guy sent me the wrong copy of X factor 100 and I messaged him and he said, Oh, the team must've sent you the wrong one. I'll look into it and get back to you. I never heard anything back. So I emailed him and waited like two or three days and didn't hear anything back. So then I, I sent an email to the customer service for the website, Atomic Avenue and said, Hey, here's the situation. And they emailed me and they said, well, this guy's got a really good selling record. So, you know, contact him. And then he immediately responded was like, Oh, we emailed you 10 days ago, you know, asking you this, but I'll, I'll paste our response here. And I looked at it as like, I went and checked my trash folder and my spam folder and my inbox. I'm like, I respond. I was like, well, I didn't get any email from you 10 days ago. You must've sent it to the wrong email address, but whatever it was them asking, was I getting ready to order anything else? So they could just include it with that. And I was like, no, nope, I'm not ordering anything else. Just, just send me my book. Yeah. But, uh, I know why they were doing it because they were like, Oh, we can just include it with that and not have to pay a shipping cost, but whatever. But they sent me the right book. I've got it. Now I've got there you go. The red foil X Factor 100. Nice, good copy too. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good copy. And it actually has a bag and a board because all the books I got from the guy before, you know, I got about a dozen books and none of them had boards, and they were all just shoved into three consolidated into three bags. So yeah, you know, I was not, you know, luckily they were okay, but I wasn't. I wasn't really impressed with the packaging, but now my X Factor. Well, my X Factor runs nearly complete. They did a gold cover second print of X Factor sixty, so I need to get a copy of that. But other than that, my run for X Factor Volume One is complete. Nice. Where you go? Awesome. Nice that, job. Was, that was one of the collecting goals for the year. So mm -hmm. that one is another one Check. checked off. Good nice. Job. Good job, man. Is that it? Thank you. So, yeah, I didn't even know about the gold. I didn't even know they did a second printing of X Factor 60. I have no idea why they did a second printing of it. There's not really anything super. Uh... No, this wasn't on eBay, Richard. This was off of Atomic Avenue. But, uh, yeah, so I, I know they did all those gold second printings for X-Men books for a while. So there's only a few of them that I don't have. So I figured I'd try and get them all since I collect those series anyway. So. I got to find the the one for X Factor 60. Nice. All right. Do you have any other books or you good? Uh, nope. That's it. Unless you want me to show off the little puzzle tin from uh, the McDonald's Happy Meal that Emily show, got. Show the puzzle tin because oh. it's worth it. Do it. All right. So if you go to ha if you go to McDonald's now, I took my daughter there on Friday. Uh, they have the Happy Meal toys as the multiverse. There you go, Eternal. That's uh, the way to do it. There he goes. With pool yeah, tabs, that's baby. That's how it should be. But you know, this guy sent it. He sent it in a um, in a USPS mailer, and he just had two pieces of cardboard, one on either side of it, and then had a like regular packing tape taped around it, and then it was just in. You know, they were just in um, like three bags. Yeah, you know, a bunch of that's different. Terrible singles shoved in there yeah okay. yeah so if you go to if you go get a happy meal now at mcdonald's for however long they run it it's this multiverse thing so you get a little cool. the one she got is batman on one side and shaggy on the other Ruh -roh. and then you open the tin up and it's got you know because it's for little kids it's got a little six piece puzzle and it's a pic one picture on one side a different picture on the other and so the one that she got the picture on one side is um, iron giant it's Black Adam, um, the the kid from Ben Ten, um, Bugs Bunny, and the kid from Adventure Time. And the other side, it's the Iron Giant, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Velma. Nice, very cool. So, yeah, yeah, get it if you like comics. Get it. Your kid will lose interest in it, and then you can have a little a little tin that you can put up on display somewhere. All right, awesome. All right, I will go next. Hi there, folks. All right, so 
I'm going to start off with this one with the Transformers mm-hmm. number six. I know I showed this last week, but I got to show something that Dan pointed out earlier in the show, probably on the pre-pre-show. In the pre-show, yeah. Optimus Prime kicking some ass, and then you see what it says <laughs> over here. Yeah, you know the song. You know the song. That's so awesome. That is. That is. That put a big point that out. in my face when I read that. Yeah, me too. That was awesome. All right, so we got uh, Justice League Godzilla Kong. This is uh, number six. Yeah, that's that's been a fun read. Yep. yep. I look forward to reading. I haven't read any of this week's books. So I look forward to reading that one. Yep. So I picked up a variant on Green Lantern number nine. Yep, that's one I showed, Jamie. Isn't that great? Yep. I need it. Of course you do. Uh, I think I showed this last week, but I'm going to show it again just because it's a badass cover. Yeah, you know, cool Colossus smashing Tim, through stuff. Tim, if you're watching, we didn't have any more of those covers left. We have the one without the the Virgin cover of it, but that's like thirty or forty bucks. So you may not. Oh no, that. you were checking for me, huh? Oh, I was checking for you. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking it was for Tim. No, we didn't have any of the regular. We just have the Virgin one of that, and that's like thirty or forty dollars. Eh, yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. So next is Carnage number five. God, I hate to be their dentist. Yeah, <laughs> no. Actually, you probably would love it. That's, I was gonna say you'd love to be that's there. money making right there. You want to put your hand in that? You charge by the tooth. You charge yeah. by the tooth, man. You're, you're, you're gonna money. put your you're gonna put your hand in that for the money. Hell yes, I'd do it. Come on. Yeah, you, <laughs> sorry, we call you Stumpy <laughs> after that. Yep, yep. All right, so I got a what if Venom number two. I do have variants of that coming. So no, we see those. You'll probably see those next week. Uh, we got a Mason Spider Man number forty five. Yep, over there. No maps. No maps, but still. No maps. Okay. Uh, Wolverine 45. I think I showed this one last week. If you want to give me your copy of it, I'll draw draw a map on it for you. Draw a map for you. If you're, folks, if you're not reading Wolverine, you got to pick it up. This is Wolverine at his finest. Yeah, that was a good kid. There wasn't there wasn't the ultra violence in that one that there has been in the first few issues, but but still, it's coming back soon. And and this one that a cliffhanger to the. To the to the next uh, fight, yeah. So so definitely check it out. I picked up Web of Spider Man number one. That's awesome. This was a compilation of different uh, Spider Man uh, stories or short yeah. stories. I should say. I have that for next week. Yeah. Okay. I got X Men Forever number one. That's a cool cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And okay, also got Invisible Iron Man, Invincible Iron Man number sixteen. Oh, that's cool. So. This is a cool story. He's now taking on all the Stark Sentinels that Orcus is using against the uh, mutants. And that's been a good story. Yeah, that's been a good story. He's taking the fight to Australia to minimize the casual human casualties or any you know, that situation. And it's just he's in a huge ass. He calls it the uh, what's he called the Sentinel Buster uh, armor. It's just it's kick ass. You got to read it. Got to read it. Oh yeah, he takes it to Australia to minimize the casualties. Like nobody lives in Australia. I know. Like nobody lives in Australia. He's just like right. these Aussies. I don't care if they die. Yeah, whatever. There's collateral damage at that point. <laughs> All right. So this is uh this goes to my back issue stack. Now, even though this is a recent issue, I did not get it, but Dan was kind enough to get me a copy of Ultimate Black Panther number one. So I have not read that yet, but I'm looking forward to reading that. Yeah, I've been carrying that around for weeks too. Like the mm-hmm. times yep. I saw him, I just I had forgotten to give it to him. Yeah, he went to the shop the other day. All right, so the next batch this this came from uh, the shop show in Annandale. Uh, one of my uh, daughter's friends, uh, her her dad and uh, myself were supervising a cookie booth for their Girl Scouts, and we were talking about comics. And he was like, you know, I really want to get back into collecting. I collected X Men. I collected X Force. And I'm like, okay. He goes, because have you ever been to the shop show? I'm like, yeah, there's one in Frederick. You know, and I think it's like, this was a couple weeks ago. So I said, I think it's, like, you know, a couple weeks away. He goes, oh, but there's one in Annandale. And I'm like, uh, Annandale, I don't know if I want to drive to Annandale. He goes, I'll drive. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> so, so we went. They're in Annandale every other month. Yeah, every other month. Just like with Frederick. Every, I think well, Frederick's like three times a year. Is it three times a year? I thought they were every three, other month. Three, maybe too. four. It's it's not every other month going Frederick. Oh, okay. All right. All right, so cool. All right, so we picked up Green Lantern, back issue number 150. Nice. There you go. Anniversary issue. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Green Lantern number 162. Uh, wait a minute, hold on. We want to save those for 
last or the back of the last of the ones. Uh, Green Lantern number 140. Oh, Adam Strange in that one, too. Yep. Yes, Eternal. Uh, there is a show, show tomorrow in Frederick. It's actually happening. Uncle Gary's going to be there. I'll be there. So, yep. I will not. I have a prior family commitment, so I will not be there. Uh, Green Lantern number 153. That's a cool cover. Green Lantern 158. Oh, that looks cool. Mm-hmm. Green Lantern 166. I like that. Oh, that's an awesome cover. It's Gil Kane at his finest. Yep. 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 Uh, Green Lantern 128. <clears throat> I like that. Green Lantern sweating some bullets here at one number 160. Damn, you just buy every copy of Green Lantern the show had? This, dude, this was a dollar bin fine. Each one of these were a dollar. Oh, wow. And I was just like, I, I, you know, he had like a yellow dot, as you can see on here, a yellow yeah. dot, like a sticker. And I'm like, what's the yellow dot mean? He's like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. They're all, everything in, this, everything in these boxes over here are a dollar. And I'm like, okay. Was this, was this when you first came in? Nice. Yes. Yeah, this was like the first table. The to first left, table in. Slightly no, 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 no. It was not the first row, but the second row, first table. Okay? That's but you walked in. You yeah. walked into his table, and you could turn left to go around to the, the first aisle, you might say. Or yeah. you could just do a little turn to the okay, right. Okay, that, that, that guy's aisle. name is Jimmy. Okay. And Jimmy's a good dude, and he has great, oh. great deals on books. Yep, and I'll, te- and I'll <clears> tell you once, I'll tell you a story here in a second. So we showed that one, 160. Uh, 163. That's a cool. I, cover. I love that That's cover. Great cover. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so then I picked up. This is the um. This is the one I messaged you about, Gary. This is the yep. uh Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Oh. Uh, is this the Hard Traveling Heroes? This is part I, of the Hard Traveling yeah. Heroes saga. It's when they yep. reprinted it. Yep. When the, they reprinted the it. Yep. So th- this was a this was a five so issue. Seven. seven issue, seven, seven issues. So I've got to pick up the other ones. Uh, I'll, I got to pick up the other ones. So I picked up, and, and they had new four. Neil Adams covers. They kind of reworked right. the old covers, but they yeah. are new covers by Neil Adams. Right. Yeah. Also, dollar each. All right. So while at the show there, I scored X Men number ninety six. There you Ooh. go, baby. Wow, that's a big boy book. Nice. It is. And X Men number thirty. Oh, nice! Yeah, nice. nice. Mm-hmm. So the the prices on these were uh, made it one hundred and ten, and I got them for a little bit cheaper than that. I got them for ninety, I believe. So, you know, worked to deal with the guy there. So that was awesome. Uh, and then, okay, so at the while I was picking out those um, Green Lantern books, I was like a dollar short of twenty because I think there was like nineteen books there, and he was like, oh. If you just pick another book, I don't care if it's in the one dollar book or if it's in the four dollar book area, you could just take that in there and count that as your your twentieth book. I'm like, okay, all right, so, I'm gonna pick a four dollar one then. Yeah. Well, look at that, I did. Look at that. Nice. Nice. Uh, number ninety. Yep. Yep. X Men number ninety. It's astonishing X Men number ninety. And also picked up astonishing X Men number twenty five. Oh yeah. Was- hey Pam. Pam. Yeah. How's it going Pam? How you doing, Pam? Thank you. That is a good score on those. All right. So these were a mail call that I got. These were not at the shop show. This was a, a mail call from a Facebook seller that I know. But Uncle Gary, you ready for this one? I'm ready, baby. All-Star oh, Spider-Man there you go. Number, number one. one. It's number, number one. one. What's the significance of this one? This, well, it's when they finally put the uh, JSA back in their own regular title after uh, All-Star had gotten canceled in the uh, early, late 70s. Yep. So. It's also the first appearance of uh, Danette Riley. R- R- Riley. Barbrand. Yep, there you go. Picked up a Harlequin number one, bat, uh, black, white, <laughs> and redder. That's a great cover. That yeah, is. That is. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Picked up uh, Amazing Spider-Man 275. There this you is go. also part of a mail call. Uh, Immortal X-Men number two. It looks like a uh, um, anti venom cover. Is that like white cream? White queen? White queen, yeah. With it. It looks like did white you cream almost say it. white cream? That's he, what did. I thought he, said. he did. He yeah, said, he did. did. I Sorry, had a that white cream over there. there. Yeah, is that white cream white on that? White queen. Yes, he did say that. All right, next one up Hawkeye and Mockingbird, number one. There you go. Avengers. 
Yeah, no, that's Solo Avengers number one. Yeah, the Solo mm-hmm. Avengers. What if Punisher's family had not been killed? Number ten. Number Looks 10. like he's still killing people. I'm gonna I'm Number gonna spoil it for you. He still ends up becoming the Punisher. <laughs> what? That's crazy. All right, ready for this one, Uncle Gary? Yep. Shazam oh, number nice. eleven, the original Captain Marvel. Yep, that is that is uh, fantastic. no reprint here. No nope. reprint here. Bro. <laughs> that is not a reprint, and it's a big deal. I I posted that on my uh, old school cover of the week uh, back uh, earlier at the beginning of the year because it started in 1974, and I wanted to highlight the 19 you know me celebrate 1974 for my uh, 50th yeah. anniversary. So that I highlighted that uh, weeks ago, but that's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a story from Top Notch. 100%. Yes, Tim. All right. Last one. Batman 553. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's a cool cover. That is a great cover. That is. Claus Jansen. Yep. Definitely. All right. And that does it for me. So, Uncle Gary, you, yeah. sir, are on the clock. All right. Um, that. And that Neil Adams, those reprints, it, I checked, it was seven issues. It went seven issues. Thank you, sir. So then Which, now I've got to got to complete that series. So let's you, add another. Have you read my, the uh, Hard Traveling Heroes series? Not 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 fully. I'll say okay. that. I know the well, story. I've read a couple of issues, but I haven't read it all the way through. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, yeah, it needs to be read. So it's great. Um, so we'll start out with. Uh, I'll start out with an alternate cover I got that was from a. Came out a week ago, but I just got it now. Was the one in twenty five George Perez Black Widow? Oh, nice! Yeah, that's so, awesome. That so, my man George Perez. Um, I, you know, and they made them a little harder now. They made them one in twenty fives, but I'm still, still buying them. Um, Web of Spider Man. I have, I, and I've not read any of the new books yet. I'll look. I'll get into them next week. Um, so yeah, because for the Perez ones. I was picking up a couple of them, the, the ones mm. they were like, you know, books that I was reading or ones that I, and there were a couple coming out. I was like, all right, I'm not reading that book, but I, I want to get that one. And I can't because they made them those, those ratio variants. And I don't know. Yep. I well, don't know why they decided to make the change. I don't know. You think the others were selling now. I, in their defense, I will say they had a hell of a lot of the others that were just variant covers. So, you know, there's like 30 others that came out. I, I want to say, and that weren't variants, but they're variants now. So, you know, um, Spider Boy, I just love that cover. I think that's yeah, a great cover. Good cover. I got Wolverine, Madripoor Knights. Yeah, I like that story. Mm-hmm. Um, the Resurrection of Magneto, because you know everybody else has been resurrected. I have not read any of that. Has that been okay? It's been okay. It's been it's been okay. Um, All right. I, again, we'll see what the third issue does. Moon Knight. But you know what's coming with Marvel? Why? Why? So maybe this is a new Moon Knight. I don't know. Maybe we've got a new Ghost Rider. I don't know. And what's the other? We got a new Punisher. Why? Why are we replacing all these heroes? I, I thought they. I thought they axed the Punisher series, Dan. They did. Is that right? They canceled it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they did. But, that. but still, you know, we're putting new people in those uniforms. Well, Again, I saw something for Ghost. You mentioned Ghost Rider. I saw an ad for issue two that said it's going to be the Hood. Well, it is. It is. Um, so here's the Iron Man. And on this yep. one, I got the variant that is really cool yep. I, on the Iron Man that I think is great. Oh, that is, oh, cool. that is really cool. Yeah. That and that's not a ratio. Really. That's just a regular variant. Cool variant. Hmm. So I, I think that's a great cover. And then finish out Marvel with another, another great Alex Ross. Alex Ross. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Alex Ross. Things swing in a telephone pole like a bat. So yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. That. That's pretty awesome. He's getting ready to hit a meteor. I think yeah. so that's pretty cool. Um, as far as independence, only one little black book. Ooh, so it's okay. a bit of a crime. Yeah. So look forward to that. Um, we'll go to DCs now. Oh, let's see. Oh, you know what? There is one more Marvel that I picked up. This I've had it in my box for a couple of weeks. I got it. The Foily Goodness. Ooh, oh, that's nice. Nice that's pretty. I had gotten this originally for Sal, but he got it already. And I said, yeah, what the hell? I'll pick it up. So yep. that's so, a cool cover. I bought it. So, all right. Hellblazer, Dead in America. 
I love me some Hellblazer, but this series yeah. is, a, is a little dense. That's what I was going to ask. How was it? Because yeah. I was thinking about picking it up as soon as it came out. Then I'm, I'm going to get it, and it's just it's just kind of dense. So we'll see if it gets better. Um, I got the alternate Swamp Thing cover. Oh, that's Do pretty it. cool. Yeah. So well, of you course, know, it, it's a Swamp Thing cover. Yeah. Of course yeah. I got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Badass Waller on that cover. So. Yeah, yeah. You said you didn't read that issue yet. No, I, I've not read any of the new books yet. So, yeah. Catwoman regular <laughs> cover. Yep, and, that Jim, Jean Grey cover was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Catwoman alternate cover. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that Jean Grey cover is nice. Those Mark Brooks Mark Brooks does great covers. He sure yeah, he does. does. So there's my War Journal regular A cover. Just the society. And we'll see oh, something the, sweet. Oh, the last page of that you're really going to geek out at. Geek out at that. Ooh, Ooh. That's awesome. That is awesome. I, think I, got, yes. I think I got one of those coming to me, too. Okay, so remember my cover of the year last year was one of these. Yeah. yeah. Well, with the with the founders on it. So near, here's the highlight and the gals. That is just fantastic. I got, I got that one on my list, you won't, Gary. Mm -hmm. That's a good cover. World's finest. Been fun read. This should be fun. The ape roll special. I, I yes. put that one back. I almost bought it, but I... hey, monkey sell. I'm buying me a monkey. I'm buying monkey. <laughs> yeah, and, and DC used to know that. They used to put apes on yeah. the cover. Monkey sell. You remember the oh. annuals they did that one year where mm -hmm. they were? All... Did you get the? Yep. Did you get the variant for that? Yeah, I did the, the scratch and sniff. Oh no, I did not get the scratch and sniff. There was a. God, there was a bad Santa one too that was like that. Uh, it's some kind of bad Santa Claus, and it had a like a rancid smell on a scratch. So I didn't get that either. Oof. One of them from back in the holiday time. Now I got a cover. I'm going to cover up the name. And see if you know. This is an alternate Wonder Woman cover. It's Women's Month in DC. Any ideas who did this? I mean, it kind of looks like Darwin Cook, but I mean, it it, it can't be Darwin Cook. Like well, it's a gal. It's a woman that did this. Um, um, you got me. Oh no. Oh, okay. Ramona Freighton? She just passed away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. At like 95, 96 years old. So oh, yeah. This is her classic style. It's fantastic. And I picked Absolutely. it up a legacy of her. She did another one, and I didn't see it. She did a Catwoman cover that I didn't grab. I didn't see it, and I just saw it, or I just heard about it today. So I'm sorry I didn't pick that up. But as a way to honor her, and I have her signature on, signature on my Aquaman archives. So I had two copies of them and she signed it. I um, was a sweet old lady and she was doing this job in the fifties um, when there were hardly any women that were in the industry. Right. So she, right. she, she was a trailblazer for sure. Uh, Justice League, Godzilla and Kong. Uh, pretty cool Nightwing cover. Yeah, I yeah. like that. And this have, you seen, have you seen the, I guess it's the issue next month. It's like the legacy issue 300 or something. And they have all the different variant covers and there's no, the, not yet. I've there's seen. The, the one a cover. That's like, um, it's almost like a motion thing where like the top line is a, like five different drawings of him walking away. And then the next line is like five different drawings of walking to the side and stuff like that. And if you, I saw on Twitter, that DC actually animated the cover, so it's like he's actually running across on there too. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh, very neat. Well, a lot of his, uh, if you're not reading Nightwing, a lot of them lately have been that same context where it looks like it's like he's running down like stairs and chasing from panel to panel. That's very cool, very inventive. And the new Superman, I've, I've really enjoyed this title. Um, I got the first issue of it. It was fun enough, so I got the second issue, the Batman 989 Echoes. Cool. So, um, Jamie, I'm showing... Well, I bought another copy of this, even though it was from last week's book, and if you didn't get this, I'm recommending this because this is one of the most fun reads that I have read in a while. It's fun. Comic okay. books are allowed to be fun. They are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> I talked Dan. I, I talked Dan into and Sal into getting this. Yeah, you didn't talk me into getting. I've already. Oh, you already got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You talked I, me into getting it. Okay, I talked Sal again. But yeah, that book, the whole book's been so much fun. Fun. This issue so fun and the creeper. So 
Jamie, if you're not getting in, they have a copy. Yeah. I bought a second copy just so I would have a second copy, you know, as a gift or something if I need. This is the creeper done the way the creeper's supposed to be. Totally batshit crazy. And there was a, in the original run of the Joker, issue three, um, he fights the Joker. And the Joker, Tim, see, Tim finally read it. Yay. Yay, Tim. I think, I think Tim was the other one I talked to. And um, the, uh, the Joker couldn't stand the creeper because he was so off his rocker. So when you piss the Joker off. Now, did you all see the big Batman treasury this week that they did a facsimile of? Yeah. Yes. Wasn't it pretty cool? Yes. Nice. I didn't pick it up, but that is awesome. Yeah. Do you think this is it? Yeah, that's it. Look at the price. Oh, it's $2. It's the original. This is a real deal, baby. I don't Come care on. Yeah. You're killing us with that. Yeah. So, facsimile. And you know, you want to see what the, you know, you put the back together. Yeah, facsimile. There you go. So. Oh, yeah, see. very cool. Yeah. So I, so I had an older, this is my original copy. And, um, I bought a beautiful copy about a year ago. Damien got some beautiful ones in. Um, for those that don't know, now the new ones were, and there was even a foily one. Did you see that, Sal? Did not see the foily one. The, the there, were, there were two that were, we, we got two or three that were foil, sold them. Rob had a good stack of these. When I was at the owner's meeting today, we had one left, just one left. And if, if y'all don't know, so the new book, I think it's 15 bucks for yeah. the regular one that's not foily. I think the 20th one. For those that don't know, this yep, yep. contains hey. the first appearance of Raz Agul. Yeah. And then it's got three other stories of that initial Raz arc. And I'll show you. Here's the first two covers. So that one there is the first one. These are by Neil Adams. So you're getting top notch. Denny O'Neill wrote it. And um, the last two stories are. And these are the last two issues that it collects of Batman. These yeah. issues are pretty pricey, especially the first two oh, yeah. Ross. Yeah. So yeah. you know, some people have them. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> some people have them. Uh, but of course you do. This was a, this was the first time they had ever been reprinted, and they were done in this great big treasury size. And for those of you watching that want to see a, you know, a, you know that's 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 that is the yeah. size comparison. So, but this was so much comic goodness for two dollars, right? And um, I I'm pretty sure that when I did buy the, this when it first came out. I may not have had those original issues at that point. I'm not sure because this was probably 1977 when this uh, big book came out. But yes, 77. Look at that right again. So, um, but it's I highly recommend those that don't have it. You can get those four great raw stories. Now Talia had appeared about a year earlier in Detective Comics, and she appears in here too. But um, Raish, this was his first uh, first appearance, and they collected in the first main storyline with him, and it's just classic so gary if someone wants yes. to pick that someone wants to pick up that back issue of that one what's what's gonna run, cost them roundabout oh, of this? yeah of this? you know what a copy like my original here you can get under 20 bucks easy oh that's all right that's not bad but, but that's because it's not you know because the conditions you know it's, it's a red it's a book right. that was red so the right. condition's not great this one here that's much nicer you, you can probably double your price Probably okay. You're probably looking at fifty to get a real yeah. nice. Still but, not bad. But for about twenty bucks for a re a copy that's been well read and loved, you can get that, or you can get the new one that's fifteen dollars. That's beautiful, but it's the um, you I know, think the, I, would, I think I would go for the original. Excellent. So anyway, just fun for y'all out there. You want a great Batman story? You know, you want to see where that character, you know, Rachel Al Ghul, um his or you know where he first appeared and again you got the great denny o'neill writing and the you know for my money the best batman artist uh neil adams doing it so you know good stuff i got one back issue this week one back issue i got it for my wife because she likes things with animals on it so if i was going to tell you there's a 60 tv series and they did a comic of and the the title character was an animal what would you guess Mr. Bear. What'd you say? BJ and the Bear. BJ and the Bear. Okay, it's the 60s. It was a little early. Mm -hmm. BJ and the oh, bear. Um, well, uh, you got to remi remember, I'm still young. I know. I was going to say Mr. Ed. Said, Mr. Ed is good. That, that's, that's early 60s. It's very good. Sal? 
I was going to say Lassie, but I'm not sure. Okay, that's what I figured somebody would say Lassie. You said 70s? This is late 60s, early 70s. But Lassie Lassie and Timmy getting stuck down the well all the time. And I did get her a Lassie book last year. But uh, Dan was kind of right but wrong at the same time. He said DJ and the bear. So if I told you bear, does that help anybody? No, probably not. Y'all too young. I'm gentle not, Ben. Yeah. Oh, gentle Ben. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would never. I, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, gentle Ben. Only old folks know Gentle Ben, and it was a series. And the fella there, danger, excitement is the fella there is Clint Howard, who is Ronnie Howard's oh. little brother, and uh. he would appear sometimes on the. Um, yeah, yeah. Eventually, got out of the well. There you go, Tim. You know how they got him out of the well? They pulled him up by his hair. You know, so he had those oh, locks. There you go. And like Rapunzel. He, you know, he 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 did he did a Fabio hair toss. The hair went up, and they were able to grab the hair and yank him out of the well. Lassie was able to get it in her teeth and and, and pull him out. So it was very, very horrific story. Um, Speaking of a horrific story about in her teeth, is as soon as you open that book up, the bear turns. Is like, oh, there's a boy here, and eats him. Eats the bear. Yeah, that that that. That's that must be why this was the last issue. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like I said, it's 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 uh. It's Clint Howard, and Clint Howard has been in most of Ronnie Howard's movies, and the when he's not, Ron Howard gets hate mail because he didn't put his brother in the movie. So it's, it's so just a little funny side light. All right, now it's time. Is it showcase time? time yeah, it's, show, it's showcase time. Showcase time. time I stand up for this. Let's go. Time for the showcase. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, get the popcorn out. Ease back in that lazy boy chair and enjoy the Here show. Here we go. Now, look. Um. Um, um, Sal there already stole some of the thunder because he showed some great issues of this already. So hopefully this can live up to it, you know, because he, he, sure he, he showed yeah. Green Lantern 150. I got to show one that doesn't even have a number on it. Oh, uh, I got to get ready to yeah. slip all over the ones you showed, Sal. <sighs> yep, there, there goes Jamie. He's off. Yeah, Jamie's gone. Oh, Jamie, Green with that. Green. So here, here's one. It doesn't even have a number one on it like it should. I got it up yep. there in the wall. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. See? <laughs> nice. And again, the reason was back then the the the, the store owners would get these books, and they're I've been getting that book, and the the distributor, yeah, you've been getting that book, but if it's got a number one. They go, I haven't been getting this book. So for a while there, DC was putting out these. Big Marv. Big so, Marv. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. Hey, Big Marv. Would put out these issues with no numbers on it. So. We got one. We should probably show two. Yeah. Uh, First Weaponers of Cord. How about mm, that? No. And that one no. does have a number two. So they say, have you been getting it? He goes, yeah, you've been getting this one. Guess what? One. Guess what? I own that issue. I own number two. Nice. Yeah, I do. Well, I'm very, that's pretty cool. What's the condition of yours compared to Gary's? <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Are we, are we, are, are we, uh, but he still has it. Yep, he still has it. Yeah. All right. Here's the number three. Nice. You know, so. And how about a number four? Number four. Nice. These are all in Secret pretty of his mask. Mm -hmm. These are all in pretty decent shape. They, they are. are. Yeah, so here's the number five. Dear God, man. Oh, oh, he's the rig. Whoops. <laughs> look at that. Hey, look at that shirt. That is hey, nice. That is really popping. I love yeah. it. Oh. Jamie, you agreeing with everybody? Yeah, the bags are making me mad. It shows better. Yeah. <laughs> Here's number six. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, a little Tomar reaction. Yep. Number six. Um, More of a Tomar two guy. Yeah, well, I hear you. you can, you're allowed to be. There's all seven. Yep. And again. Oh, Green Lantern being a perv. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what, you know, hey. That's what you use the ring for when nobody's looking. I love this cover. This is a great cover. Oh, yeah. Man. That's awesome. Now, this that's has got great. a subscription crease. If boys and girls, if you don't know what a subscription crease is, they used to put these things in the mail and they get bent. But so it's, it's but the colors still pop. And who doesn't love, I'm... yeah, who doesn't love a giant Gila monster that can shoot ivy? That's, right. that's right. Cyclops. That's Cyclops. There you that's go. Cyclops before Cyclops. Yeah. Oh, oh, and you know, seven, shit, which was seven, we didn't point out. The perv one, that's first Sinestro. Oh, that is first Sinestro, yep. Yeah, it's first Sinestro. 
I wonder what he would look like on the cover. Oh, there's his first cover. Yep. That's 10, isn't it? No, um, no it's, uh, I think it's, I don't remember. No, I, don't I, think don't I think it's nine. Is it? Nine. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one. Yeah. Because that's um, the first uh, yellow ring. Yep. And the other the other thing that's kind of neat is this is a one that came from the collection of E. Nelson Bridwell, who was a long oh, nice. time, who was a long time DC editor. Well, that's cool. Yep. So, yep. So it was a uh, that came from his personal collection, and now I'm I am with uh, holding. It. Here's ten. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, another one. The look in his eyes there, like. Eh. Also, an E. Nelson Bridwell issue. Yeah. So these he, are all- he definitely looks like he's on drugs on that cover. Well, you know, you're flying, you're flying through the galaxy using a ring, a magic ring that would that would make you a little shaky too. Oh yeah, he's definitely got some stardust happening. Yeah, there's a really cool. Oh, that's a great cover. Yeah. Yeah. What number is that? That's number eleven. All right. Classic '60s look to it, right? Oh, not sci-fi. All right. Oh, here's twelve. Yep. I have that one as well. I well, got there the you one. go. Yeah. I mean, I got these technically, but they're collected. Yep. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's you still got them. Um, here's great thirteen. Who doesn't love Big Head Flash? Big Head Flash. Everybody loves. He's Big very, Head. very smart. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's very smart. He's got that cranium. Um, here we go. First sonar. Nice. Look at the yep. color on that. It just pops. Yep. It also has a subscription. Bags, dude. Yep. 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 Yeah, well, you know, it the, the 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 Gerber bags help, but that's you know that's got a pretty good. Oh, I mean the colors up. are probably great, but like oh the yeah, bag, oh the Gerber bags are, are the best. Here's a cool Sinestro cover. Yep, that's nice. Yeah, but Don't yeah, the that? Gerber, that's fifteen, I think. 15. fifteen. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, who wants to see the first Star Sapphire? There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, number sixteen. So. I know I got the glare going, but oh, that, but that's that awesome good. though. That's good. Yeah, for sure. Go, like, honey, I got your Halloween. I got an uh, idea for your Halloween costume this year. <laughs> yep. There you go. Seventeen. Yeah, I Jamie. Who you really are? It could be Jamie and Precious. There you go. Yeah. Um, great Sinestro cover. Yep. Yeah. Yes. But now, cool laughing. Mm-hmm. The evil laugh. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing his ring down. It's not a way to treat his jewelry. Um, here's a cool nineteen. Yep, I have that one too. Nice. You're doing good. This one I got a little water damage on it, so this one may be. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to say there's a scribble on here. No, no scribble on it. It may be upgraded at some point, but the rest of it presents so well. You know? Oh, there's water damage on it. You know what? Just give that to me, and I'll make sure it gets disposed of properly. Oh, you know what? You couldn't even bring down your collection. I tell you what. <laughs> this might be something Kent could work on. Yeah. Ken Hubs. Yeah. At the Comic Hub. Yeah, he, he might, might be able to. Yeah, he might be able to. 20. Really cool cover. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love the bright green. And then I got a few more selected. Uh, you know, that was just the first twenty because I wanted to let da- let Jamie get a taste. You know, see the first. 20. Oh, I got the taste. You got the taste. Um, so these are. So now we're going to jump around just a little bit and some what I thought were some cool covers. Um, get out your seat and jump t- around. Tell me you yeah. got number thirty-four. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, nice. the shark. Isn't that a neat shark cover? It's not the yeah. first shark, but it's the first shark cover. Yeah. You know, always should have been an Aquaman foe, I think, but yeah. very rarely faced him. Uh, this is the first um, Black Hand. Yep. That's 29. I feel like for that, that was one of the books that I like. I need. <laughs> Who doesn't love a great dinosaur, dinosaur cover? Book. With a Tyrannodon. Yeah. Yep, 30. Yes. Great Gil Kane cover. This, you know, just again, this 60s great sci-fi stuff. Uh, 33 now we're jumping to Dr. Yep. Light, Gil Kane. Yeah. Yep. Tell me you got number 34 there. I do. Is that one you have? Bam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, I really wanted to get your opinion on this one. Wait till you see the condition of this. Uh, yeah. Ooh. The funny thing is, I can't dig through my box right now, but I own that copy. Yep. 
that's awesome. So, it's, Sal, look at this condition on this, buddy. That's amazing. That's a nine something easy. That's definitely. You know, this this is, I mean, maybe a mid nine, right? That, that could be. I, the the gloss on this thing is it's like I I, I bought it today. It's like I bought yep. it this week. It is yep. so freaking glossy. Wait, hold on a second. No, okay, you're right. Okay. I was like, it looked different from my my title, but no, it's not. It's the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. But mine is not as great as yours. Yeah. So this this is yeah, a mine, nine. Mine looks like it's like beat the hell. Yeah, this is a nine plus, and it looks like I just picked it up this week it off. Yeah, that looks awesome. Yeah. So I I've always thought that that was you know I'm always uh I wish all my Silver Age books were like that. My God. Um. First, uh, Alan Scott oh. in the book. Yeah, yeah. what's over that one again? Forty it should be forty. Yeah, it's forty. Forty, okay. Yeah, that one. Yeah, forty. Another cool star sapphire cover, forty-one. Yep, I do have that one. That's yeah. awesome. I love the yellow on it. Just the colors, so nice. Um, cool Gil Kane, forty-two. This is the oh, yeah. fourth appearance of Zatanna. So. Do we know where she appeared first? What's the first appearance of Zatanna? Anybody? Was it Hulk 180, wasn't it? It's yeah. Hulk 180. You know oh, what? There we go. Hulk I know. I felt bad. TJ wasn't here. Hulk 180 was the first cameo, but the first full Zatanna uh, was in uh, Hawkman 4. That's a really – I like yep, that cover Hulk a lot. Man, and go-go. Go-go right. checks. Go-go checks. Go-go checks indeed. All right. We're, all, we're down to the last few. That's a great oh, cover. That's cover. always going to be one of my favorites. Yeah, isn't that great? Just, you know how many yeah. times they homage, like made homage to that mm-hmm. one, and they should. It's, it's just a great cover. Which the, what number is that one again? Uh, what number was that? Because we're jumping around now. That is fifty-two. Fifty-two. Okay. I do not own that one. Jeez. Nope. Fifty-five. I can sell. Yeah. Well, I'm scattered that's until. Great cover. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a great classic Green Lantern yeah. core, and the and the. The Guardian ready, aim, they're going to execute him. Yeah. Power ring to death. Power ring to death. Um, yeah, and these are most of these are Gil Kane covers. Yeah, yeah. they are. That's a nice. And then that JLA 200 that I had Dan read for um, for the podcast, Gil Kane's the one that did the Green Green uh, Lantern chapter, which was really yeah. cool because he's a straight arse. Now, I'm going to show you a 59. And what's the significance of 59? Y'all know. Don't know? No, I don't go. know. Show, show me the cover. Show the cover. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. And yep. this one is First also time. pretty damn awesome cover. In yeah, shape. It is. Great cover. Yep. So it this. Is. I still like that suit on him. I don't know why. Yep. Yep. Me too. So anyway, it's, it's still a, you know, it's a high grade book. And this for a long time was a. When I bought this, was a book that was still a premium that you know people were paying for this. Yep. So, but uh, to have a nice copy. So there you go. There's my Green Lantern. You know, I, I wish. I think Jamie got bored at the end. I wish I had something. Oh, you know what? I do have. No, some- I didn't get bored. Okay. I sat there and watched and just okay. like thought in my head, if I can save up the rest of my life, I can afford two of those. <laughs> well, there you go. I, I do have a couple throw-ins that I just threw in that are kind of exciting. I don't like throw-ins. Here's Showcase oh. um, 34. That's nice. So, yep. So that's that's the third appearance of Green Lantern. Showcase just, just 34. a throw-in. It's a, it's a throw-in. And I had liberated it at some point. That was a four or five. So that's a, you saved it? <laughs> yeah, I saved it just so I know. So that was a four or five. I, my, I, I upgraded this because I had one that had a water stain there that I just couldn't live with anymore. And right. I got upgraded and I got that. Oh, yeah, I got Somebody one more. Okay. I got one, I got throw one. In that one. Come yeah, on. I got Help one more throw in. One more throw. Oh, in. That's your thing. Okay. All right. Showcase, oh, three, all right. showcase 23. This was the second appearance of, um, yep. <clears throat> of, and this is the Atom Bomb cover, which, yep. and it's got, it's kind of cool. It's got the date September 24th. So that would have been 1959. September 24th of 59 that this came out. Yep. So, so pretty cool. I hope you like the throw ins. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one more. Yeah, I did, just, just don't. <laughs> don't do it. Just don't. don't it's don't not worth do it. It's do not it. Do it. Do it. it. It's oh. not worth it. All right, Jamie, do don't want to see that. Yeah, I'll do it. Do it now. That. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, Showcase 22. This 
This is this the first one. Might be the first appearance of Hal Jordan. Maybe. That may, yeah. might make me throw up because of right. the stomach anxiety I have right now. Really? Just looking at it. Wait till you hold it in your hands and you see it. I'm not going to hold it. You're not going to hold it? Why? I'm going to have you just show it to me, to my face. Oh, man. Because if I touch that book, I'm afraid bad things will happen. Okay, that's well. Just... I, I don't like think Gil missing or like no, that won't happen. my shirt somehow. No, like... Redhead's, Redhead's got a gun. She's packing his shirt. <laughs> yeah. What's going to happen, uh, Jamie, is you're going to go missing. Yeah, that, <laughs> hey, at least the attempt is all that mattered. The attempt is mattered. <laughs> so, now, this book is in rough shape. This is probably a two. I don't but, care. But it's it, amazing. But it presents well enough. It's it's been beat, but it's a showcase 22 first Hal Jordan. I'll I'll take it. And showcase um is one of the titles that I'm the most proud to have completed because it's damn hard. You're talking about the first Barry Allen's, the first Hal Jordan, the first Ray Palmer. So showcase only went 104 issues. But um, yeah, I got a yard too. You're right. I got woods behind me. There, there are plenty of spaces for burials. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, as long as I'm even close to it, his backyard's gonna look like the cover of Dead X Men number one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Coming out yep. of the graves. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't break out this one. Oh well, I did that earlier. I yeah. did. I did. I did all those earlier. And um, Jamie, I think Jamie has them, doesn't he? Don't you? I have a couple. Yeah. So Jamie, Jamie was the Moon Knight is where you were like, I got Jamie, and I was like, I got you because I own them all. <laughs> yeah. What was it for? Was Moon it Knight. not for the Neil Adams ones? It was something that you owned them all. Uh, the, it was the Moon Knight showcase. Because Moon Knights, that's what it Moon was. Moon Knight showcase, yeah. Yeah, and Jamie was less than impressed. No, I wasn't less than impressed. I meant I didn't have to dig through all yeah. my boxes to go find have, them yeah. again and look at them. Um. So I was pretty sure, though, that I've done, uh, as one of the showcases, I've done all the Green Lantern, Green yeah. Arrows, Neil Adams ones, though. Yeah, you I have, think, but that's I, yeah. still, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is still awesome. I have two of those. I've got a graded one, and I've got one I've had. But, yeah, Big Marv, those Green Lantern covers, most of those that I showed were Gil Kane. Yeah. And, he, and he, you know, he, he did a long run on Spider-Man, too. Um, you know, mm -hmm. around issue in the 100s, early 100s and all, he, he had a pretty pretty good run. Too. So he's, he's just a classic comic artist that has worked for both companies. And he started, he started in the golden age working and uh, continued all the way into the, uh, I think in the early nineties, he continued into, but Gil Kane, just classic, classic book, classic covers. So uh, absolutely. So, absolutely. Jamie, that one was for you, brother. Thank you. Cause I, I really needed that. Cause now he's going to up the game of me collecting well, and what I'm looking for this year. Well, what you can see, too, when you come here, is I've got the whole run, 1 through 224. And if all, you want to see them all in one place at one time. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. You can do it. I just you won't touch it. Okay. So like you, like I have too much respect for that book for me to even touch that book if I didn't <laughs> own that book. You don't want a picture with it? That and number nine. Oh, the, I think the a video of him will just be having like a palsy shake while he holds that, it. That's my thing. I don't want to shake it and just start falling apart in my hands. And then it's like, oh. <laughs> well, we're not taking it out of the bag. That ain't no, happening. No, no. That, that, that ain't happening. I'm not saying it in the bag. You'll just have dust collected in there because it's. <laughs> no, but number nine is like my grail of getting a book. My, my Showcase 22 is a long dream away, a couple dreams yeah. away. But uh, as far as number nine goes, that's been my gra that's yeah. grail. That's the grail for, I don't know, the last eight years. Well, you keep you keep working at it, brother. You, you may find it in Baltimore. Who knows? I uh, almost snagged. You know, I just need that new Mutants 98 to complete my run. Well, then some second and third prints, but just that one to have the complete run. And there was a really beat up copy. Like, I mean, beat up bad going on eBay that ended today and I was watching it all week and it's a, it was a or ended yesterday. Yeah. This, this, this morning. And I was like, I, I can snatch it up. I can get it. And I got outbid on it. Like literally at the last second, it went for $79. Ooh. Was, oh man. I was so mad. Like it's, it's, beat, it's beat up. There was like a tear on the back cover and lots of fine ticks and lots of bends. But I was like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. A beat up affordable copy. What would you have paid? What is your goal on your that you would have paid for that? Uh right well, right now, until I get paid again, I'm close to broke. So I would have put 
uh, I would have done eighty because the shipping okay. on it's like the guy's got it at like twenty bucks too. So, so well, been... I'll see Damien tomorrow. Do you want me to put a bug in his ear and tell you you'd like to have a copy? But what's your price range if he finds a, a beat up copy of that? Yeah, I mean that's why I want a beat up copy because I'm looking for something like a hundred dollars or okay. Less. That's what I'll tell him. I'll say you're looking for like a hundred dollar copy of uh, New Mutants '98, and I'll yeah, just like that. a just like a beat up reader copy, just yep. just so that I can have the run complete. But I was looking at it like all week. I just kept watching it and watching it. It was like twenty bucks all week, and I'm like, oh man. And it's funny because that issue sold on there like two week, like a week ago, and it went for like two hundred something dollars. And I saw it pop up again, and I know it's the same issue. Because looking at the pictures, it's like the exact same. I'm like, I guess, I guess the guy that bought it looked at the pictures and was like, I'm not paying 230 bucks for this. It looks like you wiped your ass with it. Well, he should have done that before he bid on it. Yeah. yeah. There was another thing I was bidding on that that was kind of cool. I think I told you about it. The one page from Captain yeah. America number one that went for 200 something dollars. And it was an ad page. No, no. The ad page was for uh, it. A page from um, Hulk. What was it? Incredible Hulk one, where it's a page that just has ads on the front and on the back. And I'm like, how the hell do you know it's from the Hulk? It's just ads that are on it. Yeah, um, people but know. I, I asked the, I messaged the guy because my wife wanted to know, was like, how did you just get one page of this? And he said that he got a copy of Captain America one, but it was beat to hell. Like the first few pages had, you know, were incomplete pages. They were torn up. There was no cover. It was beat up. So he decided that he was just going to take the good pages out and get them graded just as single pages, and that way he could get get them out to collectors to to be something that's um, where they can own a piece of the book. That's you know a more affordable way. If he wanted to do that for people, I get it. But I've got to think that if he kept that book together, he'd have got more money. Yeah, well, the way he was talking about it, he was like I said, he was saying the cover was gone. The first few pages, like, were oh, the cover was gone. The cover yeah. was gone. The first yeah. few pages, like, were incomplete pages. They were like, ha you know, had pieces of the pages yeah. missing and tore up. So he took the good pages, the good complete pages out of it because it was an incomplete book too, and did that. And I was like, I, I mean, that's pretty cool. That's why I was looking at it. I'll never be right money to own a copy well, of i won't get a copy of that either i but, mean you know i won't i won't ever have a copy of that either yeah. but so. if i could get like one page from it and be like yeah i have one page from captain america comics number one that would be considering cool. that's your favorite hero i, I that would have been great for you yeah, yeah. all right 100 100 well all right before Go ahead. we end this today real fast yeah, i would like to throw out a big thank you to our sponsors yes. first off at nirvana comics guys go check them out nirvana comics knoxville.com they have an ebay store they have a live store and great ownership tim's exclusive comic shop and they have a comic book for everyone and they want you to have it so definitely go check them out nirvana comics knoxville.com also our other sponsor for today's episode is w energy guys go check them out at w.gg and your order Use the keyword code hyphen X to check out. Save yourself 10%. Go get some starter packs. Go get some actual tubs. They got new flavors out. They are moving. And there's just still more to come from them. I don't want to say it because I don't think I can. But trust me, I get a lot of emails from them. I know. <laughs> so definitely. He knows the owner personally, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, I wish. Be easier. <laughs> but yeah, and then there's one more. But I'll save it for one the more. end for Uncle Gary. All right. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, Comic Logic is proud to be one of the sponsors here on the Codex Station. Comic Logic is uh, Loudoun County, Virginia's only comic book store, and I am a proud one of the proud co-owners of that shop. And we would love to have you come out and see us. We have uh, three big events coming up on um, two on um, April April twentieth is our ninth anniversary. Nine years, nine years. And um, you can come see us. Uh, we'll have we'll have a few sales we're working on now to see, and we'll have maybe we'll have some refreshments for folks. But we just want to say thank you. Come on in, and I'll, we'd like to thank you for your patronage. Um, our really big event is on Free Comic Book Day, which is May the fourth this year. So Star Wars and comics 
intersecting. And for that, we have a special guest, Mr. Brendan Wayne, who plays the Mandalorian um, in the series. When the helmet is on, that's Mr. Brendan Wayne. So please come get uh, he's He'll be signing for us there. He'll be there. And um, he is also a legend, Hollywood legend, bloodline. Um, he's John Wayne's grandson. So I look forward to seeing that. Um, so come out and meet him. See that. Come get your free comic books on free comic book day. We would love to see you. And then our last event is on um, Sunday, May 19th. We have our spring lot con. Our spring lot con is where we will turn our parking lot into a mini comic con. And you'll get, there's, there'll be old books. There'll be new books. There'll be toys. There'll be um, local artists that have uh, um, some of their, their, their creations that they have made. And we'll also have local authors that have their novels that they're there to sell. And so nice eclectic mix of people. Uh, it's family friendly. Uh, last fall one for our fall one, Dan and um, Sal came down with the families and they had a good time. So it's family friendly. We'd love to get a chance to meet you. So please come see us. Comic Logic, Northern Virginia, Loudoun County. Um, we would love to make your acquaintance. Yes, that'd be awesome. Yep. Definitely a good show. We, we were, we, like you said, we were there. Uh, they got something for everybody there, and it was great to be there. My daughter enjoyed it. My wife walked, liked walking around with us. It was great. Yeah, Emily right. had fun, too. Yep. Yeah, Thank you. definitely. That's what we want. Right. Families families to have a good time. And it's not overwhelming. It's not like one of no. these huge shows. No. It's just we were in a little – in our shopping center, we're in a side section, and we just take over that part of the shopping center or that part of the parking lot. So it's really yep. cool. Definitely. All right, Jamie, do you want to close this out, or do you want me to go ahead and close go this out? Go for it, leave it, because, yeah, I don't want to say too much and lose my voice. <laughs> okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up our episode of Codex After Dark Comics Unleashed. I am Sal, I'm your host, Sal the Slab Guy. Down below is Dan the Man Kelly. Over there is the Ric Flair of comics, and, of course, the Master Bold himself, J-Dub. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. We'll see you next week and i hope you have a hulk 180 day i hope you fill those gaping holes <laughs> i i have no gaping holes thank you very much can't see behind your head how do you go to the bathroom yeah i didn't say they just kind of fall I said, about I just said, no gaping <laughs> no gaping all right, all right. good night folks